Welcome to the Market Mystics Podcast. I'm Joshua. I'm Kim. Let's dive in. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Market Mystics. Kim, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. You want to know something that happened today? Yeah. Um, this is going to release a week after we, um, we've recorded it. But today my daughter finally started back to school. It was like pushed off and pushed off and pushed off because she goes to a, like a micro school. And so they can do that. But she finally went back to school today and that was a big deal for all of us. (laughs) I bet that's a big deal for her because she loves to be around people. She loves to be around people. Yes. Yes. Um, she loves her friends so much. This is funny that on the way, like on the drive to school, she had two different friends call her who wanted to talk while they were all commuting (laughs) to the school. And I was like, you'll see them in five minutes. I think it's just fine. Yeah. (laughs) That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely not my personality, but go her. Same, same. Yes. How are you, Josh? What have you been up to? Uh, yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, by the time this is released, uh, Bree and I will have a new puppy. So that's pretty fun. It's, uh, it's, yeah, one of the first animals. Well, it's the first dog we've ever had together. Um, and we've both had family pets before, but this will be really, uh, this will be fun to to have. We're looking forward to the journey of it. That's super fun. Have you decided on a name yet? You we don't have. have to share it, but I you have. We have. I are you are you announcing it after you? you get him? You did not tell me. Oh, okay. I'll send it to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it next week. That's what, yeah. Next week is great. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yeah. No, but we're really excited about that. We've been like walking around our house looking at like, oh, what stuff do we need to move? Um, Like we have, like, this is a big thing. We both really love books. And so Mm -hmm. we have this like entertainment stand bookshelf thing. And all of the books are within puppy height. And we were like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't like, I don't know if a book looks chewable but is that something we we're like we're gonna have to monitor that because we don't want anything to happen to our books that's true i mean puppies love to chew yeah yeah so we've we've been watching the like youtube and tiktok videos on like little suggestions on what to do and it's been pretty interesting because just it's like amazing to me because you can find someone with whatever opinion you want. Oh, for sure. And so we're watching these videos and there's like, this person says this, but this person says this and it's all different and it's all weird. So what we ended up doing is we found one person who we enjoy their content and we're like, we'll just like listen to this person. Mm -hmm. And so we just, we're like, we're just going to do one. And they had like, like new puppy courses and things like not like playlists of videos they had made for those things. And so that's fun. Um, we've just sort of been watching some of those every once in a while and getting an idea of what we want to do with this. So it's pretty cool. Uh, that's fun. You guys are like doing puppy training before you even have the puppy to train. That's true. That's You're training true. yourselves so that you can train the puppy. Yeah. And I, I like think it. One of the biggest things we've seen is like everyone's like the first few days, maybe even week, like you're just adjusting to being in each other's space. Like you're not actually going to do any training. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, like I can wrap my mind around that and we're going to get him on a weekend. So we'll both be home to spend some time with him. So I think that'll be great. That'll be so fun. Puppies are the best. (laughs) I think so. I think I so. think so. Yeah. I think it'll PSA. Be I think it's a public service announcement that we do love dogs. <laughs> we do love dogs. Very much so do we love dogs. Mm-hmm. Um I and I think 
that honestly ties in pretty well to what we're going to talk about today because it does because we've been we have decided to talk about making (laughs) good trades in life and i think bringing a pet into your house is a form of a trade because at least for a puppy you're choosing to train something to adjust to life with something you're making a trade of some level of freedom like we're fortunate we have family close who if we needed to leave would take care of our dog but like you know you're um you're making some form of a trade when you make a choice that big but we do that all the time like with everything we do you're making a trade this was a big part that we talked about early on in our podcast was how every single thing in life is a trade. Like every choice you make, everything you do is a trade. And so whether it's getting a puppy or whether it's picking what you're going to eat, you're making some level of a trade. Yeah. And that like how you set that up, what you do with that, determines how good of a trade it is. For sure. I think at the core of it, the core of even simply trading is like a measure of exchanging life for life. Mm. So you are giving some of your life in exchange for life that is then returned to you. And I would say, I mean, you take your example of the puppy and this is absolutely happening right? So you are trading some of what your life is like right now and maybe some uh, normalcies and maybe uh, even just the space in your home um, to have this puppy come in who will then add to your life, right? So you will add to his life and he will add to your life. And I think that's a, that's a good, that's a good trait, mm-hmm. right? Um, but I think this happens in all of the things. I was also just within the concept of trading life for life. We've talked about this, I think privately, maybe on the podcast before. And just when you are consuming things, like when you're eating and you know how, I mean, in just traditional Christianity, it's very common to give thanks before you eat um, to the Lord, but also, um, I think there's something really valuable in recognizing the life that was given to then give you life Um, because there's a trade that's happening there too. Whether it is an animal or if it is a plant or something in between, I don't know, whatever it is you're eating, um, there's effort and there has been life invested into the production of this thing that you're going to consume. And there's something really beautiful Um, and I don't know, I would say fulfilling and recognizing that trade. Yeah. I mean, it's like, we've talked about this, about how, when you, when you realize that everything in life is a trade and you start approaching it from that point of view, how it is fulfilling to see it happen, um, and you can use the term everything's a trade. You can use the term like being sovereign over decisions. Like once you start taking responsibility for choices and saying, mm-hmm. yes, I want this in my life. No, I don't want this in my life. I'm willing to trade this to get this. I'm not willing to trade this to get that. Like once you realize and take responsibility for that, I think life becomes a bit more, uh, a bit more fulfilling and more fun (laughs) because like all of a sudden, I think if you don't know that that's how life works, then there is a bit of, there is a bit of life just happening to you. But once you take responsibility for, for it, then you, then life's not just happening to you, but you are actively participating with life. 
Right. Right. As you're saying that, I was thinking like it becomes reciprocal. Mm. Right. So you're not just, number one, you're not just strong arming your way through this world and through this life and having everything only serve you and never giving anything back. But also you're giving appreciation for what's coming to you too. Right. So there's like, as you give, there's also a receiving and it may not look exactly the same thing, like the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. for instance, when you are employed, you will go and give your time and your effort in exchange for a currency, right, with your employer. And that's usually how employment works, right? Sometimes it may be like I own my own business. Sometimes I do work for someone who then does work for me and it is an equal trade. Mm but it's an exchange of value, right? And I think um, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this today was sometimes sometimes we get presented with trades that are not good trades, where there's not actually an exchange happening, um, but simply like one side or the other always taking or always giving, And when that happens, I don't think that it makes it bad or evil. I think it throws things out of balance. Mm. That's what I think it does. And I think what we're ultimately looking for is like, where is the life in this? We've talked about this so many times, right? And if it is simply always giving, 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 or simply always receiving, 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 um, that balance of life just isn't kind of, I don't know, staying equal. I I don't know. There's like an equilibrium that's being kind of put off. What do you think about that, Josh? Well, when you're talking about that, what was coming to mind is like, there's a difference between trading something that is of a different kind like maybe you're trading financially but you're receiving in someone else's time or something else like it doesn't have to be in like kind for it to be a good trade um as long as you recognize what the trade is happening but what you're talking about is like uh, maybe a trade that if you were on the other side, you could convince yourself is a trade of something not like kind, but for the other person, they're not receiving the equal value. Even if it's not in like kind, they're not receiving equal value from it. And so uh, like, and that can be like, I think that's so important to recognize those times And to like, one of the things we talked about before we started recording was like how in trading, um, you will generally successful traders set up a set of trading rules, say trading parameters. Like I will make this kind of trade. I will not make this kind of trade. If I do this kind of trade and I lose, then I, you know, make sure that I am aware to watch for that pattern in the future. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're talking about is like, maybe there's moments where you're willing to make a trade that is lopsided because of whatever reason it is, but you're willing to do that. But you make note of, oh, that didn't actually work out the way I wanted it to. I don't want to do that. It could be like working a job. Like you could, you could help a friend out like, cleaning out their garage for a garage sale and just be willing to make a trade that you know like isn't coming back to you in like kind but then if that same person like every three months is asking you for that then you can like analyze that and be like no it's actually not something i want to do like that's not a good trade for me and to me that's that's kind of what we're talking about is really being aware of the trades we're making so that we can make good trades. For sure. And one of the things that I think 
we've missed thus far, but I don't want to leave out is sometimes it's a three-way trade. So it may be your friend is asking you to move Mm -hmm. and you give of that and there's nothing that's reciprocated and they ask you to move again and it may not seem like a good trade, but then you ask the Lord and he says, no, this is a good trade. You do this. And so then he will repay and like, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I think... I don't want to leave that out because there are a lot of things I could just hear in my mind people going, well, what about being a parent? Like that doesn't get reciprocated. What about serving the poor? That doesn't get reciprocated. I think it's not always just a two-party system, but I do think so much like when it isn't just two parties, so much of it has to rely on your relationship with the Lord. And is he telling you to do this or are you doing this simply to make someone um, happy? Like, is it a people pleasing thing? Mm. And that really can happen. And there are people who are people pleasers and there are people who know people are people pleasers (laughs) and who will take advantage of that. And then manipulation starts to happen. And then the people pleasers start being drained and the people who are manipulating start being vampires, essentially they're leeches. They're latching on and taking and never giving back. Mm. And when the Lord isn't saying, yes, this is a good trade. I'm in this as well. I think that's when you really have to check it and be like, no, I'm sorry. This isn't a good trade for me. Yeah. Yeah, and I do think you're right that there are there's definitely things that may not seem like a good trade that the Lord will bless. Like when you said that, I instantly thought of like Proverbs 19:17 which says um whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward them for what they've done. Like on an earthly plane, giving to the poor, there's no like that, that can't be reciprocated in most ways, right. but it carries a, like, it's like the debt has a cosigner <laughs> and the cosigner is the Lord I, yeah. and he'll repay it. And that I think is like, that's a good trade. Like that will always be a good trade. Um, even if it's not repaid in kind, that's still a good trade. And that to me is like, Yeah, I don't know. I think just this whole conversation is like, we've been real big lately on like taking responsibility for your life. And this is part of it. Analyzing the trades you're making, putting boundaries in place. Like Mm -hmm. that's, this is a big part of it. Yeah, for sure. And I would, I would even say like, I could see so much, like religion and have to get tied up in this topic. And I don't want that. Like Mm. the point of having this conversation is not actually for more, um, more chains and being tied up more. It actually has to do with more freedom. And if you happen to be a people pleaser and you tend to give out more than you receive and you tend to wind up working on an empty tank I wouldn't say, um, don't make it a religious thing, but make it a relation thing Hmm. and go to the Lord and say, is this a good trade? Is this something I'm supposed to be doing? And don't make the mistake of saying, can I do this? Because in my experience, and maybe this isn't everyone else's experience. If I ask, can I, he will always say yes, because I am free to make my own decisions. But if I say, is this ideal? Will this give me life? Then there may be a different answer. And it's not asking permission. It is asking like, is this going to bring me life? Is this ideal for what we are doing? And when I say we, I mean me and him. I mean you and him. And I think he will answer. And it may be like that still small voice in your heart and it may be an audible boom and it may be the time, whatever the time on the clock is that you notice every day popping up, just popping up or something. You, like right. it may be, however it is that he speaks to you, um, he will. And I think it can also just be having peace in your heart. Hmm. Um, 
but I just want, I want to be sure to like keep him in the equation because I do think, I really do think there are trades that seem in the world in a two party system. They seem like uneven trades or like bad trades, but he can flip everything on its head. A couple episodes I talked about like a crypto exchange trade that I made that, um, wound up looking like it was a bad trade. And when I went to him about it, he like really flipped that thinking on its head with me because I thought I was trading in a dollar value and he was trading in relational value with me. Mm. And not always is the value going to be exactly what you think it's going to be. Um, and so I would just say maybe be open to that. Am I complicating this too much? I feel like I'm complicating it too much. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. But we've also walked a lot of this journey out together and learned these things. So I think we track very well together on um, what we're talking about. But I think really just the heart of this is I want people to start to be aware of the trades they're making in life. I mean, we talked about it from the point of like even the simplest thing like taking a step is trading energy for movement like exactly like even just the very little things and you don't have to be consciously aware of all of that because that would be pretty draining but like if you can start to realize that even down to that level it is a choice there is there is you can you can like have these micro choices throughout the day, then it can help make the big things seem a little bit more bite-sized and have a little bit more understanding of what you want from them. For sure. For sure. So not that I would recommend doing this all the time or staying in this place, but if you want to get real micro with it, if you have in any way been lacking a grateful heart. It's a really way to get grateful <laughs> is to like really hone in on some of the really micro tiny little things that are happening that are trades that yeah. are exchanges. It is every breath you're taking, you know, you're trading, you're bringing in oxygen to then flow through your blood and mm. clean up things. And then carbon dioxide is coming back out. There is an exchange that is happening, even in right. the things that we never, never think about in the taking the step in the speaking a word in the taking a bite of something like it is in so much of what we do that if you were to take just even a, a minute, 30 seconds to focus in on just some of the tiny things that you're exchanging, I kind of think you can't help but have a grateful heart. You know what Very I mean? Very much so. Very much mm -hmm. so. Mm. Yeah. That's good. I like that. You can't help but have a grateful heart. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Well, thank you. This was Kim's idea for a topic, and I think it, like, I don't know. I love this topic, so I'm grateful you brought it up. Thanks. Me too. I feel like it blossomed into something like <laughs> yes. from where, I, where I started. Yeah. Um, just, okay. Truth be told, let me just, here's Kim confidential today. I have been in the last few months, like dealing with some, um, maybe unintentional, but some manipulation that's been happening, um, in my direction. And, I recognize it and have really been challenged to resist giving into the manipulation because it's not life giving mm. while still being very loving. And so when there's anything that has that essence on it, <laughs> it's kind of, I'm like hyper aware of it just oh. because it's kind of been in my atmosphere for the last few months and this isn't a, a hate-filled or unloving thing. It is just I'm recognizing some of those patterns. And I have been having to weigh some of this. And so something came up in the last few days that kind of carried that essence. 
And I wanted to feel guilty about having those boundaries and those parameters set up, except that when I go and check it, it isn't life-giving and it is not an equal and good trade. Mm. And the Lord has shown me this and I felt it in my core before I even said, well, what do you think, Lord? <laughs> I love when you start to query yourself so much that you can answer the question like even right before you start to go ask it. Right. Yeah. And so it's just, this is why this subject is coming up, but we have talked about it for years. And I mean, personally and on the show, it's been sprinkled in throughout. Um, But I think it's one of those things that I forget about sometimes you know, I don't always pay attention to the minutia. I don't always like stop and take the breath and realize what is actually happening and life being given for life. Like that's a very real exchange that is happening every moment of my life. And uh, I don't know. It's just a good reminder for me today. Yeah, that's good. Well, thank you for Kim Confidential. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thanks for bringing this topic. I hope that people find life in this conversation. I hope it's a good trade for their time to listen to it. Yeah, me too. Me too. Thanks, Josh. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Hey, thanks for listening. Keep up with us along this journey by liking, subscribing, and becoming a member through YouTube. Members get exclusive access to bonus content with our guests, deeper dives into topics, and a look into other projects. We're glad to have you here. See you next time.